Okay, so I made my first fountain and it made me think I could make lots of fountains and I could be really at peace because that makes you feel at peace, doesn't it? Okay, not to look at it because it's ugly. It is, I admit it fully. It's, it's just bad looking. But, and also the cable's hanging out the, the top because I, I just threw it together. It, it's really fun. The, the, that little sound, that just makes you feel so good. And then you look at it and you think, damn, you know, that's really interrupting my flow. So we're going for a very much more nicer fountain the second time that I'm going to try, OK? I do like this, but I didn't wash the rocks. And so the water's kind of this kind of grimy color. But it is fun to just experiment with the way the rocks are placed, because you can kind of make it small and quiet like this. Or you can make it a bit more exuberant like this. Make it go, go all over the place. <laughs> OK, wait. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you know? I don't have children, and so this is what, but if I had a toddler, by God, he'd learn to aim. See, isn't that pretty? There you go. So I've got more ambitious now because I've got a bigger pot to make a bigger fountain and hopefully better looking. And I'm going to use big rocks like this that I got from out in the field there. And um, not only that, but I'm going to drill the hole, OK? So the cable doesn't just have to come out the top. The cord's going to go through. It's going to be invisible. So the eye looks at this thing and feels immediately at peace. OK, that's what we're going for here. So what I'm going to use is a glass, ceramic, and tile drill bit. They're shaped um, in this funny way, quite an unusual bit. But it just chews through glass and ceramic like nobody's business. So that's a really good thing to know about. Once you know how to use these things, you can like install um, stuff in your tile bathroom, like new towel racks and stuff, because you know how to drill into those tiles. So we'll pick a spot on the pot that's sort of low, but not. we don't want to be actually drilling on the curve, because then the bit skates around a bit. So let me just. OK, so I'll just pick a spot. Oh, um, safety glasses. The uh, shards of ceramic in your actual eye, shouldn't, they're not meant to be there. And so this is, uh, this is the idea to protect yourself from that fate. Now, I'm going to turn ar around. I, might have, I think I might be coming through the other side. Yes, see, I'm starting to, that little flake there. I don't want to blow the hole any bigger than it needs to be, because the cord that I'm going to be working with is, is this one. So you don't want to get end up with a, a huge hole, because it's harder to seal. So I'm going to come from the other side now and just uh, finish drilling that hole. There it's through. And that's pretty tidy. OK, so now I'll just get rid of the dust. No, don't do that, because you'll end up all powder coated. OK, so here's the deal. Um, the, the pump is great. This part sits in the, in the bowl and does the pumping thing. And then you've got to figure out a way to get this through this hole and all the way to the place where you're plugging it in. Now, the way we do that is um, very tricky, because it's you know, a fairly big thing to go through that little hole. So uh, what you want is to is have a tool like this and actually cut it off. There. OK, so we've cut this off. It comes through the hole, like so. I've probably rewired the plugs of, pro I've probably done that 20 times. And there's something I usually do, which is when I take the um, housing apart, that's this thing on the replacement plug, just undo this one little Phillips screw. I'm so keen on like hooking this baby up and stripping the wires and doing the electrical bit that I forget every time to put this thing, the housing, on first, because then you have to slide it up once you've completed the connections. So if that happens to you, just like start over, because it's not something to get all mental about, OK? All right, so what we have to do is peel off the outside layer 
okay, of insulation that will expose the three insulated inside wires. So go with the utility knife, put it down on a hard surface, and roll the utility knife back and forth, trying to split that wire. It's just really easy to cut too deep, and then you have um, bitten into the inside insulation on one of the three wires. Ah, uh, bummer. See what I did? I hit copper. Once you hit copper, you gotta start over again because, of course, it's not safe to have the copper exposed in a connection that's happening farther along the wire. So just start over and go till you get it right. Okay, what rhymes with pump? Oh, thou sweet and noble pump, wouldst thou enable me to clear the dreaded midlife hump in joy perpetually? Unless you have some kind of like surgical experience, this can be a little tricky. All right, so this is good. You always check, check around the tops of the wires here just to make sure you don't see any copper and that's looking pretty good. Now they've made this fabulous tool um, that has all the different gauges of wire marked right on them. So you slide them over the end of the wire and just squeeze down and then pull. There, pretty. That's how it should look. Okay, so we do this on each of the three wires, the black, the white, and the ground, which is green. Okay, so the next thing to do is actually attach each of the wires to the correct screw terminal. There are three, and this is how you tell them apart. This is silver colored, this is green colored, and this is brass colored. They're always those different colors and always the same. And the reason is because each of these wires goes to a different one. And it's pretty easy. The neutral wire is white, and the, the hot wire is black. I remember it this way black and brass, it's two Bs, it's an alliteration thing. So the black goes to this one, and then the green is really obvious, it goes to the green tinted screw, and the white, which is neutral, goes over here on the silvery one. Okay, so make a little um, hook shape with the wire, and then you wanna just slide it into the space between the top of the screw head, and that's gonna clinch it. Right there, screwdriver. Okay, I'm left-handed, so let me just get this right. Aiming is everything. I attached it onto the screw in the same direction. See, as I tighten the screw, it actually pulls more of the wire in. Otherwise, it, you really fight it, okay? So that's pretty tight. Now I'll just attach the green one in the same way, and then the neutral wire, the white one. There we go. And now the black one's come off, so I'll have to go do that one again. And then the white one. Oh, honestly. Okay. The white one's gone. The white one's. Oh, thou font of burbling glee, thou naughty little trickle. Oh, gurgle forth, oh, comfort me, for I am in a pickle. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh, this is so good. But you know what, this is what I'm saying. If you get, I'm so victorious now, and I've got a little bloom, a little glow. But if you get to this point and you then realize that you've left this off, it's smart. It's a deeply painful experience. So, so just, if it happens to you, you know, just, I warned you. Okay, so now this pops back into the housing, housing like this. And then we've gotta kinda put some pressure on it because I need to be able to see there's a little hole here that I need to put that little screw back, which by now, of course, is completely gone missing. Um, but we know it was here at one time. <laughs> oh, there it is right there, see? By the way, you totally void your wa warranty by doing this to your pump. So don't be thinking if, if something goes wrong with your pump that you can take it back because you've cut the plug off and rewired it. Uh, grunting is good. <laughs> okay. 
you know? There's times when you just have to go to a strong, manly relative with huge hands and say, please, please help me with this. The rest of it I'm good for, but this I'm not good for. <sighs> and so I'm going to do that, OK? And then I'll be back. I'll just, uh, I'll just be back. OK, wait. <laughs> It pays to keep a guy around just for those moments when you need to get plugged. OK, so here's the deal. You've rewired this. So it's a good idea to test that it was correctly rewired before you build your whole fountain, just in case anything went wrong. So you want to pull this out to the point where you have enough to reach your AC, insert the pump into a vat of water where it likes to be, and then just, OK, do this with dry hands, though. Plug it in. And we have action. Check it out. Whoa! <laughs> OK, take my word for it. It's working, OK? What a happy sound. OK, so that's good. So I'll just dry my hands off again, unplug it, and then I'm ready to seal up my hole, because otherwise leaks will occur. OK, so first thing to do is get all the cord out that you are going to need to work with. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> OK. <laughs> There's not in it. It's just not my day. OK, wait. This comes out. And the thing is, if, you, if you're not completely filthy, dirty, and repelled by your own ineptitude by the end of something like this, how are you ever going to know if you feel peaceful when you turn your fountain on at the end? You know what I mean? Like, if you're in a bad mood by the time you turn your fountain on, then that's, ek. that's a good thing, because then you'll immediately experience relief. <laughs> OK. Oh, man. I need relief. OK, so. OK, so the pump is in the bottom. You don't want to snug it up right against the hole, because then once you get your rocks you know, starting to put them in, you, you have nothing to play with. So give yourself some chances, like so. And now we're going to silicone seal this opening, so we can be sure that the whole container is waterproof. Um, so I'll just dry it off a little bit so that we'll get a good seal. That's good, OK. So this stuff is clear silicone, which uh, looks a little bit nicer on the outside of the container. Only thing is, sometimes they say they're clear, but they don't really ever get clear. They, they still stay a bit white. So I'm just warning you, OK, because it's an aesthetic thing. There we go. So a generous amount of silicone. Don't be scrimping. And then it's time to take a deep breath and just walk away, because this stuff takes 24 hours to set up so that it's solid. If you disturb it before then, you tear it, and you, you have to start all over again. So I'll just clean up, and then we'll just wait, and then we'll come back, and then we'll go forward to the whole part where we make the rocks happen. Oft I wonder, seriously, without a pump, where would I be? Would I be off and roaming free, or sitting, brooding, sulkily?
Yeah, that's good. That, that's set up right just the way we want it. You know how I can tell? When you apply silicone, it has a vinegary smell. And when it's cured, you don't smell that anymore. Well, that's smelling pretty good right there, right down there. Yeah. Yeah, this reminds me of the first time I got drunk, actually. It was just like this for hours. I don't want to relive those memories, so I'll be standing right up out of that. So here we go. Here's our little pump. Um, I did show you this before. It's got these little suction rubber feet on the bottom. This is good. You have to install those yourself. And it keeps them like stuck down to the bottom so that the pump isn't trying to move around and vibrate against the rocks. OK, so first thing we do is add the water. I can barely contain myself. I don't know about you. It must be the sound of running water. OK, this is going to go too slowly. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to place the rocks. Oh, oh, before I show you that, though, well, not that you really need to be shown how to put rocks in a bowl, but um, let me just show you how the, they give you these different um, adapters that make the pump do different things. So there's variety in life. OK, so whoa! <laughs> Get any on you? OK, OK, wait. Oh, heck. OK, well, it's got a steady stream. So this is the thing that adjusts it. And um, there we go. Boom. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It all fell apart. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> OK, is this fun or what? <laughs> you got there. Ooh, settled right down. That's more like it, a sensible flow, really. OK, so as I was saying, see, look, it comes, uh, it comes a lot or it comes hardly any at all. Oops. Much less enthusiastic. OK, so, but you get some adapters with this, OK? So this one makes a flower petal pattern. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't at all, really. OK, wait. Huh? So that could look a bit boneheaded, though, sticking out of a pile of rocks. Like, what's really the raison d'etre, if you know what I mean? So we won't do that. But we could try this, the sprinkler pattern. <laughs> Whoa. Huh? OK, who needs the rocks? We just need water play with this thing, this attachment. OK, so you got options, right? But I got to tell you something. You're going to have to build the rocks up really high. So you might just want to take a hacksaw and actually cut part of this off if you want a sort of a lower profile, sort of a fountain thing happening here. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it on a fairly athletic setting and uh, add the rocks. Um, also, I forgot to mention, when you first add the water, it's, it's good to just cover the fountain so it has a proper intake. If you fill it too full, then the rocks end up displacing all the water, and then it overflows. Sort of going with the big ones at the bottom and then working into the smaller ones. It's sort of an artistic decision I'm making here. Maybe the pinker rocks near the top. See, I've skewed this so it's not too symmetrical. I'm very good. There. That's subtle. OK, now, the only thing, though, I'm not happy with the flow. I'm going to have to adjust it. Better. Oop. Well, you get the idea, right? If it's not sort of a wet t-shirt contest by the end, you're not having enough fun. OK, there you go. Mmm, beautiful, peaceful feelings are starting to overwhelm me. OK, so see, look, I started out with this 
poor little thing that doesn't look so good, but it, it's okay, it's friendly. Then my next effort was ever so much more artistic. And there was all that fun with the plug. And then look at over here though. This, is, um, this one was made by Aquarian Networks out in Edmonton. And it's made from a, a hybrid urethane, which includes recycled car tires. So you gotta love that. And then this also is made by the same people, Aquarian Networks. They're very beautiful and serene. And then Don Colvin did this stoneware and porcelain one on the end. And it's a, a tree, it's an indoor fountain. So, you know, you can really get creative once you know how to work with a pump. So anyway, I'm gonna move this one out to the garden now and find a good spot for it. Probably over by the outhouse there to encourage people who feel a little reticent, you know how it is. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Honey! Oh, though I was in a slump and foundered hopelessly, I'm conquering life's cruel grinds and bumps with pure serenity. My fountain pulls me from the dumps, renews my energy, and henceforth with I leap, I jump, cause boy, I gotta pee.